Hello everyone, welcome to FTE. Feel the English, feel the fragrance of learning. Today we are going to analyze the sonnet 30 by William Shakespeare. No need to introduce the poet or the sonnet here, William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare is one of the greatest literary figure in the history of English literature. He is not only a great poet, a sonnet and sonneteers, but also a great dramatist, who has given us the taste of comedy as well as tragedy. And he has contributed a lot to the English literature and language. The master user of words vocabulary in his writings. The great English writer of all the time and all the ages. So now we are going to analyze his sonnet number 30. Before analyzing the sonnet stanza by stanza, stanza by stanza, we must know what is in the sonnet or what is in the poem. So about the poem or about the sonnet. Before I inform you about the poem or about the sonnet 30 by William Shakespeare. I would like to inform that the sonnets are divided into two major structure. One is Pet Petrarchan sonnets, another is Shakespearean sonnets. Because sonnet was composed first by the Italian writer Petrarch in a different form and then William Shakespeare adopted a different for form of sonnet which are known as Shakespearean sonnets. So in all the maximum in uh, maximum sonnets one or two maybe differ but almost all the sonnets by William Shakespeare follow the same rhyming scheme that is A B A B C D C D E F uh, E F G G this is the common structure or pattern of the rhyme scheme of each and every sonnet written or composed by William Shakespeare. Okay, now about the poem or about the sonnet 30 by William Shakespeare. Sonnet 30 by William Shakespeare is a tribute to the poet's friend and in all probability his lover who is identified as the Earl of Southampton by the many critics. The thoughts expressed in this sonnet are in continuance with what Shakespeare had prof professed in sonnet 29, that is the earlier number of sonnet, earlier sonnet composed by Shakespeare. In that sonnet, the poet the poet proclaims that uh, the young man is the harbinger of intense, intense joy. He admits that remembrance of that friend brings him so much wealth. He would scorn to exchange such an experience with all the riches of the kings. 
Sonnet 30 further develops this theme. This theme. The poet's sorrowful recollections of dead friends are sparked by the lover's absence and can be quelled only by thoughts of his lover, illustrating the poet's dependence on his dear friend for spiritual and emotional support. Except the final two lines of the sonnet 30, all the lines reveal the po poet's past life and his remembrance of the things past. These lines have emphasized the poet's sorrowful past with the spot of many losses and grief. The poet is so emotional and making self-analyses. Revealing his past life with so many vain and losses. These lines presents the poet's broken heart, remembering his past that he could never get back to relief. But the final two lines of the poems clarify the poet's present situation that all his losses and uh, grief are repaired or we can say are healed while remembering the sweet moment of his past past life spending with his intimate friend or lover That remembrance of happy moment erases all the poet's losses and uh, pain and uh, grief and functions as remedy for him or finacy for him. Now we are going to analyze the sonnet stanza by stanza. In the first stanza, the poet has expressed his thoughts in this way when to the seasons of sweet silent thought i summon of remembrance of things past i sigh the lake of many a thing i sought and with all those new while my dear times washed in the first stanza of the sonnet william shakespeare is representing his situation of the present. In the present situation or in the present life of the poet, when to the seasons of sweet silent thought, when the poet remembers the past life, his past life, that is the seasons of sweet silent thought. Okay. The thought of sweet moments and as well as the thought of bitter and boring moment of the past. I summon up a remembrance of things past. I sigh the lake of many a thing I sought and with the old those new while my dear times washed. When the poet remembers the past, the happy moment, the sweet moment of the past life. He summons up the remembrance of things past. The poet sighs the lack of many a thing he sold. He could not able to get many things that he sought in his earlier life, in his past life or in his past days. So the poet is in the situation of remembrance and also analyzing what he could not get in his past days. The poet's heart is full of grief and sadness because many things he could not could not acquire what he sought. 
he could not acquire. The, among these things, the things may be material or non-material, but the poet sought he could not get in his past days when he sought he could not acquire. It was the lack of the poet, poet's wishes, desire. I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with all those knew while my dear times washed. And this way, remembering the things past, remembering the past memories, the poet just wastes, wastes his valuable present time. He is unable to get anything from those memories. These memories only hurt the poet mentally and emotionally. Emotionally. So this is the first stanza of the sonnet. This stanza is the introduction to the poet's present life. This happens occasionally, not a day or a particular time. It was happened to the poet or it was occurred to the poet that when he remembered the things past, remembered the memories of the past, he could feel sadness inside his inner heart because he could not get many things he sought. Okay. This is the first stanza. Now, the second stanza of the sonnet. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow? For precious friends hid in death's deathless night, and weave a fresh, weave a fresh lapse, long since cancelled o'er, and mourn the expense of many a vanished sight. This stanza reveals the fact that. The poet is not only remembering his lover or his intimate friend, but he is parallelly also trying to remember the sweet and happy memories and moments spending with his friends in the past days. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow? The poet is questioning himself in a sense of cynicism that then can I drown an eye unused to flow for Frasia's friends hid in death's deathless night, deathless night. The poet's eyes was not used to flow. The tears in the eyes of the poet was isolated for many years. Now how the poet can drown an eye? How can the tears come out of the poet's eye when for many years or many days the poet's eyes are not used to flow remembering those memories. The poet is feeling emotional. The poet is emotional and he is sad remembering the past but tears, tears are Tears are not coming out of his eyes. His eyes are useless. Because what he remembers are the memories of things past that he is trying to remember after a long 
period of time. So then can I drown an eye unused to flow for precious friends hid in death's deathless night? How can the poet use his tears, flow his tears for precious friends hid in death's deathless night? This line also reveal this line also reveals the fact that many of the poets friends are no more in the in this world they are no more they are in the dark dark and uh, deathless night of death they are under the imprisonment of death the poet is remembering all his friends with whom the poet spent his happy and pleasurable moment of his past days and past life and weave a fresh love long since cancelled off the poets weave the poets weave and tears are cancelled since long that is why the poet is not able to flow his eyes because there is a very long gap this stanza also reveal the fact that our sadness our emotion becomes law and and law and uh, and weak because of the gap of the time time is another force that uh, lead us to a world of forgetting and we cannot react the same emotion for the same grief because of the gap of time because of the passing of long time this theme uh has also we get from the short story the fly by catherine mansfield and mourn the expense of many a vanished sight and uh, and how can the poet mourn for many things and memories and some of the memories have also been banished from the sport of the brain so this is the second stanza of the sonnet now the third stanza of the poem of the sonnet then can i grieve at grievances of grievances forgone and heavily from woe to woe tell over the sad account of for bemoaned mourn which now pay as if not paid before the third stanza is also revealing the thoughts and emotions that has also been revealed in the second stanza of the sonnet then can i grieve at grievances forgone then can i grieve the same line used in the second stanza has also been used in the third stanza then can i grieve at grievances forgone and heavily from woe to woe tell over 
the sad account of for we mourned moan which i now pay as if not paid before the poet is questioning that uh, is he is he able to able to grieve at grievances for gone that is the grievances of the past because the grievances are are grievances for gone that is the grievances of the past the grief and sadness arousing in the heart of the poet is not the grief and sadness of the present but the grief and sadness of the past then how can the poet grief for the grievances of past it is quite difficult to grieve at the grievances of past because most of the time past memories are forgettable though we cannot forget such memories as revealed by the poet william shakespeare or the sonnet here william shakespeare but even that we are not able to flow our eyes remembering those memories though we feel sadness and grief but though the poet is using the line then can i grieve at grievances for god this does not mean that the poet is not not tearing the poet is not flowing his eyes the poet is the poet's eyes eyes uh are flowing tears remembering the things past remembering the memories sweet and uh, bitter memories of the past may remembering his friends the poet is in the ocean of grief and sadness and his eyes are flowing tears that the poet uh, could not believe in his present situation that is why the poet is revealing such sense of cynicism then can i grieve at grievances for god the poet is questioning how he could grieve at grievances for god the poet is surprised because of the grief and sadness aroused in his mind and heart and the tears come out of his eyes that is why the poet is explaining within the sonnet and happily from o to o tell over the sad account of for beyond moon which i now pay as if not paid before the poet has never paid any attention to the memories of his past life to his old friends dead friends or his lover but when the poet is remembering to those memories the poet is surprised because of the sadness and grief and emotion aroused in his heart is extraordinary unbeatable the poet is breaking down and his eyes are flowing tears the eyes are now wet his mind is thinking what he neglected for for a long pe- uh, period of time for a long period which now i pay as if not fate before okay. so all the three stanzas of the sonnet reveals the poet's emotion 
his grief and sadness, remembering his past life, his intimate friends, or his lover, his friend. All the stanza, all the three stanza, represents, explains the poet's desire, his past moments, happy, happy and sad, sad moments of the past, the memories of the past, and uh, his losses and pain of his past life. All these things have been revealed through these three stanzas of the sonnet. Now the final two lines of the sonnet. The final two lines of the sonnet is are quite different from that of the first ten lines of the sonnet, dividing three stanzas. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. The two lines, the two ending lines are the central theme, are the central point of whole sonnet. It is the nature of Shakespearean sonnet that his sonnet are centered through the last two ending lines. The central element is always presented in the last two lines, as in the sonnet it is also noticeable. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. When the poet thinks of the sweet and happy memories, happy moment of his past life, spending with his dear friend, spending with or, or spending with his lover. Restore all his sorrows and losses and uh, what and his pain, his sorrows are end. Sorrows end. So the sweet and happy memories of the past relating his dear friend, relating his lover, banishes or make the poet's losses restored and sorrows end. The poet, poet's uh, mind and heart become fresh and energetic, remembering those happy and sweet moments of the friendship days, or the moment spending with his dear friend. This is the central point, central theme of the whole sonnet that has been presented in the last two lines of the poem, of the sonnet. So it is the analysis from, the, from me, Sonnet 30 by William Shakespeare. I hope you have learned many things from this analysis and you like the video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you have any query, please comment below in the comment section. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support is utmost necessary. 
so thank you once again for giving your valuable time to learn the tip and intellect thank you for watching have a nice day may god bless you